Hello everybody, I hope that you are all doing fine and happy as I welcome you to this course in which I will provide insights into the realm of phonology with the objective to offer a thorough understanding to this branch of linguistics that empirically investigates the sound systems of languages. Before proceeding in this course, I would like to draw your attention that it will be divided into short lessons that focus on the main topics of phonology and phonetics. Also, this course has some objectives to achieve. By the end of this course, you will be able to define and differentiate between phonology and phonetics, describe sounds in terms of their physical properties and characteristics, define and differentiate between phoneme and allophone, read and write the phonological rules, and finally, to account for the phonological processes in terms of rules. So the present lesson is a short introduction to the course in which I will provide a general overview of the discipline following this outline. I will start by a definition of phonology, I will define phonetics, and then I will explain the distinction between the phonemic and the phonetic representation. Now let's define phonology. Phonology can be simply defined as the scientific study of the sound system. It is a field of inquiry that empirically investigates the speaker's knowledge of the sound system of a particular language. In other words, phonology is mainly concerned with how sounds of a particular language function in relation to each other. This stems out from the belief that there is a system of rules that underlies and governs the combination of sounds in languages. And this justifies why we have certain sequence of sounds or cluster of sounds in certain languages instead of others. Let's illustrate this point by taking an example from English. In English, we cannot have the cluster or the sequence of sounds at the beginning of the words. But we can find words that begin with the cluster pele. Therefore, we can have in English words like play, place, plague, etc. But we cannot have words like l'pay, l'pays, l'pay, etc. The question that everyone might ask in this regard is why? A simple answer is that there are certain rules that govern the combination of sounds in English as well as other systems of sounds. And that's some of what we will be showing in due course. Now let's define uh, phonetics. As we have just seen, phonology deals with rules that govern the sound system of a particular language. However, phonetics studies the acoustic, auditory, and the articulatory characteristics of speech sounds. That is to say, phonetics is concerned with the physical properties and features of the speech sounds. For example, when we describe a sound, let's say p in terms of its physical characteristics and features as a voiceless bilabial stop, here we are doing phonetics. Phonetics helps in the classification of sounds of languages in accordance with their similarities and differences. Additionally, uh, phonetics is composed of three main subfields. The first of which is the articulatory phonetics. It investigates which speech organs are involved in sounds production. That is, it provides a description of how sounds are produced by the tongue, lips, teeth, vocal cords, etc. The second subfield within phonetics is the acoustic phonetics. This subfield tries to answer how speech sounds are transmitted from the speaker to the hearer through the, uh, through the sound waves. In simpler terms, acoustic phonetics investigates the nature of, of the waves produced by the speaker as he or she produces sounds. The last subfield of phonetics is the auditory perceptual phonetics or the auditory phonetics. 
It investigates the hearer's reception and understanding of the speech sounds being produced. That is how the receiver perceives which speech sounds are being produced. This picture represents the interaction between phonology and phonetics through the process of speech production. So before producing sound or speech sounds, the speaker resorts to his or her tacit knowledge that is located in the brain and selects sequences of sounds or clusters of sounds that are allowed in the, uh, in the language that he or she tends to speak. In this case, we speak of phonology. Once the selection of, of the cluster of sounds is done, we give order to our speech organs to produce these sounds. On this level, we speak of the articulatory phonetics. And once they are produced, the sounds become in a form of waves that are transmitted through air. Here we speak of the acoustic phonetics. These waves are translated into sounds again when they reach the hearer's ear. And it is the job of the auditory phonetics to investigate this process. And once they are translated into sounds, they are tested and verified against the tacit knowledge of sound system that the hearer has. That is to say, they are tested whether they are well formed or not. Here we speak of phonology again. In brief, as you may have noticed, phonology deals with the abstract level of sounds, while phonetics deals with the concrete levels of sounds. However, there is an overlap between the disciplines, phonology and phonetics, in the sense that we cannot talk about one of them without the intervention of the other. Speaking of this overlap between phonology and phonetics, it is highly recommended to bring into consideration two notions, phonetic and phonemic representation. Now let's explain each of these representations. First, the phonetic representation. It is a type of sound description that represents the physical characteristics of speech sounds. It captures sounds in speech as a sequence of distinct and different sound segments. In this regard, we tend to use square brackets to describe sounds. This is mainly to indicate the specific characteristics that are particular to sounds in certain environments. For example, the sound p in English is realized or produced as p with aspiration, as a voiceless bilabial aspirated stop when it occurs at the uh, initial position of words or in a stressed syllable. And is produced as per is produced as a normal per, a voiceless bilabial stop without aspiration in other environments. Generally speaking, both realizations are described using square brackets to indicate the uh, minor details that distinguish sounds according to their to their context of occurrence. The aspirated p captures an additional element or feature which is aspiration, which becomes p. And p occurs in other environments besides that of the aspirated p. It is noteworthy that both sounds can replace each other without affecting the meaning of words. For example, pet and pet, both words mean the same thing, yet pe is realized as pe or as pe without affecting the meaning of, of words. Unlike phonetic representation, phonemic representation is a type of representation that describes the characteristics or the features of sounds as they are stored in the mind, regardless of their specific characteristics that are imposed by the environment. In this respect, we tend to use slashes to describe sounds instead of square brackets to show that sounds are distinctive in nature and cannot replace each other. 
otherwise the meaning of words will will change for example in the words let and set the sounds le and se cannot replace each other without affecting the meaning of the words that is if we replace one sound with the other uh, if we replace le with se we will get different meanings this is because sounds have natural characteristics that make them distinctive in character by distinctiveness we mean that the, uh, the sound's ability to change the meaning of uh, words. Phonemic representation then describes sounds at the level of phonology. By contrast, phonetic representation describes sounds at the level of speech. Now we have come to the end of this lesson. I hope that you enjoyed it and see you in the next lesson.